DNA analyzes shed new light on Machu Picchu. It was a cosmopolitan city. An international group of scientists has examined the DNA of those buried in Machu Picchu, revealing incredible genetic diversity. The city was inhabited not only by members of the royal family, but also by servants and workers. It turns out that representatives of these lower social strata came from distant lands that had been conquered by the Inca Empire. The Incas ruled a vast area of South America from the early 15th to the mid-16th century, more than a century before the Spanish invasion. The community built a huge palace high in the mountains of southern Peru, Machu Picchu. Scientists speculate that it was the design of the Inca Emperor Pasha Kuti, who ruled from 1438 to 1471. Research shows that Machu Picchu, located at an altitude of over 2,000 meters, was home to around 750 people during the high season, including the emperor, royalty, guests and servants. The ruling dynasty surrounded itself with people called Yanakona, who were not Incas. These are men from conquered lands who were taken into slavery or offered to their ruler. Serving women were referred to as ACLLA, and were also not Inca. Their main task was to meet the needs of the ruler, singing, dancing and performing religious ceremonies. Now a team of scientists has analyzed the genetic material of more than 30 people buried near Machu Picchu. They were all likely servants of the Inca elite. The research results were recently published in the journal Science Advances. Over the past hundred years, Archaeologists have discovered the graves of nearly 200 people who died between 1420 and 1532 near Machu Picchu. Due to the simplicity of the burials and the non-Inca objects found in them, experts assume that the found remains belonged to slaves or servants. To confirm the hypothesis that those buried in that area were slaves or servants who had been brought from various parts of South America. The researchers analyzed the remains from four cemeteries located near Machu Picchu and compared the genetic material of the deceased with contemporary Inca ancestors. The team discovered significant DNA differences between the ancestors of the Incas and those who inhabited their empire. Most of the male servants came from the mountainous regions. The female servants, known as ACLLA, had a much more varied, non-mountain background. The Machu Picchu area was much more genetically diverse than modern Andean villages, said Lucy Salazar, an archaeologist at Yale University. Only one closely related pair, mother and daughter, has been found near Machu Picchu. Analyzers suggest that the mother was from the Amazon and her child grew up in the Andes. There is no evidence of biological relationships between other servants of the emperors. This suggests that the ruler's service consisted not only of slaves captured during the conquests, but many people came to the city in search of a living, as is the case today in large metropolises. Anthropologist Kenichi Shinoda, who was involved in the research, says that, Machu Picchu was a significant city in those days. It is not surprising that people from different regions gathered there. Shinoda and his team had previously analyzed DNA from skeletons that had come from graves around the palace.
Mysterious life forms discovered beneath Antarctic ice. Deep beneath the ice in Antarctica, there is a greater variety of life than expected. Researchers drilled through the Ron Filchner ice shelf in the Weddell Sea. They inserted cameras into the drilled holes, which, to the surprise of the researchers, showed deep-dwelling organisms, sponges, crustaceans and other unidentified creatures. The researchers point out that these findings prompt a rethink of the limits of life on Earth. During the exploratory study, scientists drilled through more than 900 meters of ice on the Ron Filchner Ice Shelf, located in the southeastern Weddell Sea, 260 kilometers from the open ocean. In total darkness and extremely low temperatures, sponges, crustaceans and several other species that we may have never seen before have been observed. Scientists point out that it is extremely interesting to discover sponges, immobile creatures attached to boulders at the bottom of the sea, in these harsh conditions. This discovery is one of those lucky cases that shows us that Antarctic marine life is incredibly unique and incredibly well adapted to a frozen world, said Hugh Griffiths of the British Antarctic survey. Lead author of the study, which was published in the journal Frontiers in Marine Science. Ice shelves float on the surface of the water and are in a way an extension of land glaciers. Their base is submerged. They usually end in an ice cliff, which is the front of the glacier and from which the icebergs break off. The mass gain of the glaciers comes from snow falling on the continent. This mass is slowly moving towards the shore. The glacier shelves represent the largest unexplored habitat in the Southern Ocean. They cover over 1.5 million square kilometers of the Antarctic continental shelf. Due to the inhospitable conditions and difficulties in accessing this environment, these areas have not been properly explored. So far, eight previous wells have partially explored an area about the size of a tennis court. The only way to study this unique ecosystem is to drill ice and lower observation equipment to the bottom. This is what the British Antarctic Survey did. The scientists inserted a camera into the drilled hole, which, to their surprise, recorded a sponge-like creature on one of the boulders at the bottom. Current theories about what kind of life can survive under glacier shelves suggest that all life becomes less plentiful under such conditions. Due to the distance from open water and the lack of sunlight. Previous research has shown that small scavengers, small fish, crustaceans, jellyfish and krill are most likely to be found in these environments. Scientists did not expect to find in such an environment, far from regions where photosynthesis is possible. Sponges that filter the water in search of food that sinks to the bottom. This is the first ever video record of such creatures deep beneath an ice shelf. And it seems to contradict all previous theories about what types of life could survive there. This discovery raises many more questions than it answers. Such as how did these organisms get there? What do they feed on? How long are they staying there? How often are similar boulders on the bottom of a glacier shelf a mainstay of life? Are these the same species we see near the glacier shelves? What would happen to these communities if the glacier collapsed? Says Griffiths. But to determine anything, you have to take samples of these creatures, 
which is quite a challenge in itself. To answer our questions, we will have to find a way to get closer to these animals and their environment. And this is 900 meters below the ice cap, 260 kilometers from our ships where the laboratories are located. This means that as polar explorers we will have to find new and innovative ways to study these creatures, adds Griffiths. In total, in the video recording, the scientists found one sponge attached to the boulder, 15 more unattached ones, and 22 unidentified organisms that may also be sponges but the video record does not allow for accurate recognition. The survival of most life on Earth depends on the sun. Photosynthesis is one of the most important biochemical transformations on our planet. But in the dark depths, where sunlight does not reach, living beings use a different strategy. Around ocean thermal vents that emit heat and volcanic chemicals, bacteria rely on chemosynthesis to make sugars, forming the base of the food chain. A similar ecosystem based on chemosynthesis was found in a cave in Romania, isolated from the world for millions of years. Perhaps the organisms found by the researchers use a similar survival strategy. It seems that the creatures seen by the camera must be using some form of chemosynthetic food chain. Scientists speculate that they may also benefit from nutrients provided by melting glaciers. Further research will answer these questions.